G'day, welcome back to my design, creativity and technology channel, my name's Aaron. Today we're going to be using Fusion 360 to draw a basic part. I'm going to take you along the, the path that I used to create it and hopefully you can replicate this yourself in your own home. Welcome to my very first episode of where I shoot inside my brand new home CNC workshop. I'm going to be posting regular fortnightly videos on Fusion 360 showing you simple tips and tricks and stuff that I use with my friends and my students. However, today we're going to be making this aluminium plate, which is a side plate to be bolted on the side of a milling machine. Okay, I've got Fusion 360 open and the first thing I'm going to do in here is to create a new project. And this is somewhere where I can save my work. Go to the top left hand side of your screen and click the show hide data panel. Click the, the click on the blue button, create a new project and type in there and call it what you want to call it. Uh, give it time to synchronise to the cloud and then double click on that folder and go into it. You can see at the moment I haven't got anything saved in there so let's start. Now before I start drawing in Fusion 360 um, we actually have to design to Australian standards AS1100 over here. That means the Z must be in the upright position. So click on your name, the little drop down box there, click on preferences and just about here it says wire, default modeling orientation. We're going to change that to Z up. Click apply and OK. Now it won't take immediate effect and you'll see up the top here. We have to close this design, a new design will automatically open and you'll see now that my Z is in the upright position. Okay, to draw this aluminium plate today, we need to click on a new sketch or create a sketch, and we want to select this ground plane here, which aligns itself to the X and the green, which is the Y axis. So click on the bottom plane, come over to your sketch palette, and click down here, and we want a rectangle, and we want to pick up a center rectangle. Now, if you haven't picked that up, no problem, you can come over to the right hand side here and choose that option. Um, I like to snap mine to the centre, this makes the rectangle locked in position and won't move. So we click the mouse once and drag out to the right, and you'll see the dimensions are highlighted in blue. Now the width of this is 80mm, uh, push the tab key and it will take you over to the other dimension, and the height of that is 92. Press tab again, and once we hit enter, it will lock those dimensions in. Now don't panic, if you didn't do that, I'm going to delete one of these dimensions. Come back up here to sketch and come all the way down the bottom and you can see sketch dimension is there. Now always look to the right, there's usually a, in Fuse 360, there's a shortcut key. Um, so you'll see the shortcut key is D. So if I click D, you'll see the sketch icon appear, the dimensioning icon appear. Click on the, on the bottom line until it highlights. Click once, let go on the mouse, drag down and click again to terminate and hit enter. What we're going to do now is extrude this. So if we come up here to create, and this is a feature, and this is the first one we're doing here today is extrude. Click on extrude, and I like to do my extrusion always going upward. All right. So I always like to go up, I don't like to go down. When I go down, that usually cuts it, so when I teach my students or uh, other people I'm teaching, I always tell them extrude up. If you want to extrude cut, go down. Type in here 10 millimeters, hit enter. Now the next thing we're going to do on that aluminium plate is put that fillet. So come over to the modify icon here, click on it, the drop down, choose fillet, click that bottom left corner, and type in 10 mil. We want a 10 mil radius and OK it. Now if we view on the top view now, you can see that um, we've got the radius, we've got the shape we want for the aluminium plate. Now we have to put in some counter boards. Now I would suggest, look, when you're doing uh, parametric 3D design, there's many ways to do different things. Uh, I draw the way that it suits me. You may have other ideas and that's cool. There's no right or wrong way. But how I'm gonna do the counter board, I'm gonna put some points on here and this will allow me somewhere to snap the counter board to. So click the drop down on sketch come all the way down here and we want a point. Now just randomly, I'm going to put six points. So one, two, 
three, four, five, and six. Now, if they don't align, it's not a big deal. What we do have to do, though, is put a dimension on that point. So once again, click on this drop down near sketch and pick up dimension, or you can use that shortcut key, which is D. I like to click the point, click the edge, drag out, and that height there will be eight millimeters. Enter, and I'll click the point again. So D for dimension, click the center point, click the edge, the line, up we come here, and that's going to be six. Now, I can align these points uh, in a minute, but what I need to do is put the, these points can float, I'll show you here, can go anywhere they want. So I need to lock them down so they don't move. So once again, D for dimension, here to here, and this point will be 43. The next point from here, D for dimension, and that will be 78. Okay, you can see now that they're locked that way, but I can still move them left to right. So what we have to do here is to fix them. So we click the point that's locked in, hold our control key, click our second point, right click, and choose horizontal vertical. Once again, click the top point, hold our control key, your shift key will also work right click and horizontal vertical and you'll see those points are locked in now if I try and grab one I cannot move it where this one if I grab it I can still move it okay we need to put a dimension in from the edge of here to this point here so click the point click the edge of the line and this one over here I believe is eight mil so now we can lock these other points in so I pick this point and I want him to align himself with that one, so I hold my control key, right click, and I want to do this horizontal vertical, that will snap him in, you'll see that little bar appear here, which means it's locked in. Now, I click this one again, sorry, and this one, right click, horizontal vertical, I'm going to click that one and that one and make them align to each one another, horizontal vertical. Now it only leaves me with this last point. You can see here it's free to float around so I lock it down. So here we go. Let's lock him down to that one. Horizontal vertical. And let's lock him into that one. Remember to hold the control key or the shift key when you're selecting those points. Okay. let's. Uh, it's time now to put in some um, counter bores. Now you'll find the counter bore in the create. So click on the drop down icon there for create. And come all the way down here to hold. And what we're going to do now, uh, Fusion 360 is asking, you know, where is the placement, where are you going to point it? So I'm going to click that one, that one, that one, all the way down to I have those six points that I created earlier. Now in your counter ball, we want to, we, the diameter of our, our drill hole is 6.25. It's usually 6 mil, but I'm going to allow a little bit of clearance. Um, the depth of that will be 10 mil, so that's going to go all the way through. Tip angle of our drill is 118. Now the counterbore depth here, so counterbore diameter will be 10.25. So 10.25. And counterbore depth, however, will only be 6 mil. And that's looking pretty good. Let's execute it. Okay. We haven't, you can see here, I've I've missed something, so I'll come back here, right click. You can always edit your feature, so don't panic. And depth here, diameter, that should have been six. Six mil, diameter of 10, counterbore depth, yep. And there we have it. You can see how I'll fix that up now. Now don't panic, if you do make a mistake, you can always come back down to the timeline and right click on it. Uh, on your sketch or your, one of your features and you can edit it and fix it. To get out of it, you just quickly, simply click stop sketch. Same with this first extrusion. If I didn't extrude it deep enough or, you know, or too deep, I could go edit feature and we can edit that there as well and click OK, it comes back. We can also click on the playback and watch it in progress how we created it. Now there's one more thing we need to create and that's the nice little chamfer around the outside. So when I'm CNC machining this, I can tell my uh, chamfer mill or my spot drill to come in and do it. All right? I don't usually do this, but I'll do it this in here for the exercise. 
So click on the modify. We're going to come down to chamfer. You'll notice there's no shortcut key for chamfer. Click on the edge. Now you can see here it's not chaining. That's not a big deal. So you can see I've only got this one edge. Now it's chained around here. I'm going to hold my control key. Click that one and that one. We want a 0.25 chamfer. I don't want it too savage. Click OK. If we zoom in, you can see a nice chamfer all the way around there. Back to my home view. Now before you close your design, make sure you save it. So come up to the top over here, pick the little old floppy disk icon, click save, and Fusion is looking for the folder the location, so you can see, because I've already gone into that uh, folder of the project I created, it's going to save in there. However, if you didn't want it to, you can always click on the drop down and choose another folder of your liking. And we're going to call this here basic extrusion part and enter. It's going up to the cloud. Now let's to now to confirm that, click on the show high data panel, go back to your project in here. Anytime you can come out of that, go back into it. And you can see the part, it's updated to the cloud and we're in there ready to go. We can click on the I button here, the information button, and we can uh, check our version control, uh, when it was designed, who designed it, who created it. Uh, we can also invite people by clicking on the people and typing their email address in, and we can invite other um, collaborators to work on a project. Alrighty, thanks guys. Uh, please appreciate your feedback and your thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you next time.